Hi, this fifth part will be the final part in this specific format and from next time onwards we'll uh, try a different format wherein we can cover more number of questions in each video. So I'll definitely consider a request because I've been getting numerous requests to co cover as many questions as possible. So I'll consider and that's the reason why we are here and we're able to do what we're doing in our channel, isn't it? So this will be the final part in this specific format okay so in this part we'll discuss few relevant topics pertaining to NEET MDS 2019 question paper starting with Krausen syndrome so Krausen syndrome as you know it's a type of craniosynostosis so there, there was a question or there can be a question like sutures which are prematurely closed or first closed suture or whatever so Krausen syndrome first described in 1912 as one of the varieties of craniofacial disostosis which is caused by premature obliteration and ossification of two or more sutures most often coronal and sagittal sutures and clinical features as you know uh, there can be facial deformity with coronal and sagittal sutures being obliterated fontanelles remain not obliterated and pulsating for a longer time and in one specific reference i found out that craniosynostosis presents itself in different forms bilateral coronal synostosis is a most common type of deformity associated with apert and krausen syndrome in which the head appears short from front to back which is nothing but brachycephaly so premature closure of coronal suture another form is scaphocephaly in which the sagittal suture fuses prematurely thus fusing the parietal bones so i'll repeat one important point here bilateral coronal synostosis is the most common type of deformity associated with upper ten krausen syndrome right so that's pertaining to krausen syndrome and some literature review now coming to cusp size in mandibular first molar, in fact we have discussed the sequence or the range of the different cusps and their sizes both in maxillary first molar and mandibular first molar in our study club discussion. So if you look into the image, the largest is mesobuccal followed by mesolingual followed by distolingual then distobuccal and the smallest one would be obviously distal cusp right. So the largest is mesobuccal and the smallest is distal cusp. And maxillary first molar, we have a jet shaped pattern as we discussed previously, starting with the largest one, mesopalatal. And then you have this jet shaped pattern of arrangement, not as such arrangement, but the order of size of the cusps. So, largest is mesopalatal, followed by mesobuccal, distopalatal, and distobuccal. And obviously, cusp of carabell, which is a non functional cusp, can be considered as the smallest among the five cusps right now moving on to hypersensitivity reaction so even in previous video we have discussed about management of type 1 hypersensitivity so basically type 1 hypersensitivity if you look into the description of the previous video it is IgE mediated so we'll just go through various hypersensitivity reactions and their examples type 1 is allergic IgE mediated type 2 is cytotoxic as you know antibody mediated type 3 is immune complex mediated right and type 4 is delayed or cell mediated type of hypersensitivity reaction the best example for type 1 anaphylaxis these things latex certain medications as you know a penicillin whereas type 2 you have hyperacute graft rejection hdnb reaction simulatic disorder of a newborn good pasture syndrome Whereas type 3 examples include a patient's disease, you have this hypersensitivity pneumonitis, isn't it? And systemic lupus, erythematosus, polyarthritis, nodosa, serum sickness, so all of these can be cited as examples for type 3. And type 4, uh, cell mediated, delayed type of hypersensitivity, chronic graft rejections, latex allergy, uh, nickel, uh, any uh, testing of allergy uh, to specific metals or base metal alloys so uh, all this fall under type 4 hypersensitivity reactions right now coming to various muscles which elevate and depress mandible so we have discussed in detail about various muscles of mastication to be in brief masseter temporalis and medial lateral pterygoids right so we have various muscles of mastication all of the muscles except lateral pterygoids are elevators which means they close the mandible whereas lateral pterygoid is something which depresses which means opens the mandible so this is very important and uh, do not get confused between elevation and depression elevation leads to closure of mouth depression of mandible leads to 
opening of mouth so all the muscles of mastication except lateral pterygoid act as elevators as you can see in the image lateral pterygoid is something which depresses the mandible in other words lateral pterygoid helps in opening of the mouth i hope it's clear right now moving on to various primary and secondary colonizers i'll give you examples of these in terms of plaque formation few examples of microorganisms if at all there is any extension question for this uh, do let me know we'll post the same in the description part of this video so as you can see in the literature given in Carranza also so the primary or the initial bacteria which colonize include gram positive facultative microorganisms which include actinomyces viscosus and streptococcus sanguis whereas secondary colonization and plaque maturation you can see various microorganisms like prevotella intermedia prevotella lichi capnocytophaga species fusobacterium nucleatum porphyromonas gingivalis so all of these are secondary colonizers right so if at all there is an extension to this specific question do let me know and volume of maxillary sinus is uh, something which we had discussed previously uh, several times in our discussions so we have average volume and a range so the average volume of a sinus is about 15 ml with range extending between 4.5 to 35.2 ml we're talking about volume of maxillary sinus and coming to salivary gland neoplasms diagnosis what's the role of FNAC when you compare uh, other diagnostic methods excisional biopsy or incisional biopsy or punch biopsy FNAC has been the mainstay so fine needle aspiration cytology has been widely used diagnostic technique and is considered to be the first tissue based procedure applied to establish a diagnosis before any surgical intervention in a lesion is done and it's relatively inexpensive quick to do uh, well accepted by patients associated with low morbidity and has relatively high diagnostic accuracy just keep these points in mind the mainstay of FNAC in salivary gland disease is distinguishing benign from malignant lesions right the sensitivity and specificity reported is high for benign lesions whereas it decreases in cases of malignant tumors so that's pertaining to some literature review pertaining to FNAC now coming to leontiasis osseo so as such this is not a diagnostic term but it's only a clinical feature so leontiasis osseo also called as leonine phases or lion phase lion phase syndrome it's characterized by overgrowth of facial and cranial bones as you can see in the image it's rather a symptom than a disease entity itself it's a symptom of various other diseases which include uh, Paget's disease, fibrous dysplasia, hyperparathyroidism, condensing osteopathies, etc. So leontiasis osseo is clinical feature in, in, in the following mentioned conditions, right? Now, moving on to the penultimate one, metal oxides in porcelain. So why do you add these metal oxides in porcelain? So porcelain has numerous components and the function of metal oxides is to impart color, right? So we have various metal oxide pigments which are added to impart a specific color to the porcelain. And finally, floating tooth appearance in radiograph. So it's not just one uh, lesion, there are several lesions which have this appearance. We'll discuss in uh, brief the list of various lesions wherein you can have floating tooth appearance. So floating tooth phenomenon is a classical radiographical uh, radiological symptom. It consists of dental structures surrounded by non-opaque tissues. The literature clearly states that this is a symptom or a feature of not just histocytosis X but also few other infiltrating lesions which we'll discuss now. So as I said floating teeth phenomena is a classical radiological symptom. It consists of dental structures surrounded by non-opaque tissue which has in infiltrated and replaced alveolar bone as a result the teeth may be protruded causing malocclusion most frequently this happens in molar and premolar region and 
Also, it's mentioned that floating teeth were originally described in Hans Keller Christian disease, later in eosinophilic granuloma. During the fourth and fifth decades, the opinion evolved to that these conditions, together with a later severe disease, are closely related, and they have given a common term called histocytosis X. So, combination or uh, combination of these terms or these conditions: Hans Keller Christian disease, eosinophilic granuloma, and later severe disease. Nothing but histocytosis X. So this term was coined in 1953 to unify these three uh, conditions which I uh, mentioned now. So floating teeth were for a long time thought to be pathognomonic for histocytosis X. According to genesis of floating teeth, however, other infiltrating conditions can also give rise to this phenomenon. In the pediatric age group, these include giant cell granuloma, Ewing sarcoma, leukemia, lymphosarcoma, reticulum cell sarcoma, familial dysproteinemia, and metastatic neuroblastoma. And a number of other conditions can occur in mandible, presenting with different radiographic features. So, histiocytosis X is right along with histocytosis x also as i discussed the following lesions also can present with floating tooth radiological features or uh, symptoms as such rather a symptom we can say it's a radiographical or radiological feature so these are some of the topics which i wanted to highlight in this specific video so from next video onwards we'll change the format and try to incorporate more number of questions and we'll try to be as much brief as possible fine so wish you all the best. Love you all.